King Greenland and King Scotfrey had to come up with another idea. Sultan Laventine had already given the orders to move across the southern bridge to Viet Thanh. The Orange Navy was also deployed. The Greens had to form some sort of alliance with the mercenaries down south in Pearl. They sent word that all attentions of the Tangerians were now facing towards the Tangitan Wars and he made arrangements with a guy called General Mythic to blockade and invade the southern fortress of Fort Tan. General Mythic of the Perlinese Pirates was delighted as he accepted 1 million plastic credits and a promise from the Greens of legitimate lands within Plastica. If they were to take Fort Tan of course and divert the Tangerians attention from the east. In return for this green generosity, the Purples grant the military access to the Greens and the Blues to cut across through Pearl and land some of their airborne troops in Viet Tan. This was when the GBT alliance was formed as an opposition to the GOR. The Greens and the Blues sent thousands of airborne soldiers and special forces to southern Viet Thanh and they established a landing strip and base. This proxy war could now break out into a full blown world war and things were getting out of control. The one thing that the Greens and the Blues did not want was the involvement of the treacherous Red Union. Meanwhile, back in Pearl, General Mythic and his fleet invade the biggest fortress in known Plastica. It's called Fort Tan and in a two day battle they did manage to secure the walls and hold the place ransom to the Tangerians. Sultan Laventine was very shocked by this random state of affairs and he ordered Colonel Peel to divert from attacking the bridge and move to retake the fortress and destroy the purples. He also brought forward what was left of his navy to blockade Fort Tan and prevent reinforcements from arriving. General Mythic sat in the fort, frustrated as his fleet was still on hold by the Greens. The Greens could not decide whether they wanted to send the fleet up north to fight against the Greys or send the fleet directly into the Tangerians fleet. He moved his troops beyond the safety of the fort into Tangerian lands. He did try to obtain some supplies for survival and managed to destroy Colonel Peel's advance and force him beyond the Great Wall of Tangeria in an epic battle for a power station. Now it was clear, this would be the new purple lands. Back in Viet Tan, the Greens and the Blues moved more soldiers to Tanoi. They even dropped some men behind enemy lines to cut off supply routes and damage the oranges from behind. This doesn't work though as the Greens and Tans retreat to an abandoned fortress in the woods as the Reds now move troops into northern Viet Thanh. Yes, that means the Reds have now joined the war. Leading the way was the 51st Strike Battalion, a highly trained unit trained to do one thing, destroy, and they engage with Green soldiers for the first time in the Battle of Tan Nam. This was an absolute disaster for the Greens and the Tans, but they did manage to take out a lot of the red fuel deposits before falling back to the fortress. The 51st Strike Battalion then followed the retreating men, and a fierce battle was fought and won by the Reds once again. All hope was lost, and all remaining Green troops behind the front line were either killed or captured. This war was definitely getting out of control. The Blues engaged the Reds again for the first time in 200 years and war breaks out in the neutral zone. As no man's land is established between the two neighbouring nations, the Battle of Tanoi City commenced and Green, Tan and Blue forces charged through the streets with heavy armour and fight it out against the Tangerian and Red defenders marking the most brutal battle of the Tangitan Wars. This ultimately ended in a GBT victory, but it was extremely close as the Red Army still owns the eastern outskirts of the town. All became quiet for a short period of time as diplomatic negotiations created a temporary ceasefire as all the leaders came together to try and stop this world war. This is when the Greys saw their chance, and they decided now was the time to strike.
they send across the Great Iterinian Sea a vast fleet of transport ships to land beyond the lines of the neutral zone and attack at the heart of eastern Blutania. They break through the blue coastal defences and push inland for miles. The blue home guard under the command of General Bluton then devise a plan to form a line to stop the Grey Nation from pushing any further forward. And it worked. Diplomatic negotiations in Viet Tan result in the end of the Tanjitan Wars and the Red Army seizes control of Tan Nam and other provinces. The GBT plead with the Red Union for Tan Nam as all of the power for Viet Tan comes from within that city. But Tsar Valentin rejects the plead and turns his attention to the new war in Eastern Blutania. So after a few weeks, it is now coming up to the festive period of which all nations would celebrate the God of Light and thank him for their existence. All Plasticans would spend time with their families, eat and be jolly just once per year. In the meantime, the Green King saw no reason for all GBT forces to remain in Viet Tan, and he has brought most of them home. All seemed to be a stalemate, as no faction could move, and the day of festivities commenced. All factions across Plastica agreed to a ceasefire for 48 hours, and troops on all sides gathered on the battlefields. They exchanged bread, tea, and they played games, and it was like there was no war for the duration of this ceasefire. They spoke of their struggles to one another as well. Other soldiers were stuck behind enemy lines, casually marched back to their comrades, uninterrupted by the enemy for the duration of the ceasefire. All was quiet in the east until once again the artillery started and the front line once again became hellbound with death and destruction. King Greenland then devised a final assault. With his airborne soldiers in eastern Blutania, they must cut off their beachhead and prevent any supplies from reaching the greys for the duration of the next blue advance. The blues would then meet the tired greens and celebrate once breaking through the grey lines, but General Greyhelm is smart and he is prepared for such an attack. And now here we are in the story. So much has happened so far, and so much is to come. We have General Sahara in the deserts of Tangeria, who's cooking up a rebellion of his own. And we also have him investigating into some Tan prisons, which the Tangerians have been holding some Tan civilians in for quite some time. So will Viet Tan become an independent nation? Will the GB forces in Eastern Blutania break through the Grey Lines? Will the Red Union conquer what was once theirs be in Eastern Blutania? Will the Purples get the land they deserve in Tangeria? You tell me, so find out in the next episode of Army Men of War. So a big thank you to everybody for all the support lately. And um, yeah, I hope this brings the series together for you guys that are all confused. I know that I've, I've been a bit lost in my own series lately and I think that's because in this series we do make up everything as the series goes along so nothing is written. We always make it up after we write the previous episode so I think it's all came together really well and um, there's still so much to do, there's still uh, so much to play, so much to make and um, I want you guys to help me so do leave a comment in the uh, comment section obviously and um, tell me what you guys want to see and what you want to come from this series what kind of battles do you want to see more of do you want to go back to the human dimension and play more toy like battles um, should we try and get the spiders working again it's up to you guys you have to let me know um, also subscribe to this channel as we're we're on nearly pushing on 34,000 subscribers now and also like the video and also, if you want to support me even further, there is a link to my Patreon in the description as well. I do offer exclusive rewards for Patreons. But um, I also have Instagram, um, Twitter, pretty much every social network really. So if anybody wants to keep up to date with my daily life or um, anything like that, do go and check out the other links in the description as well. So anyway, I think we're going to end the video here. Um, I am going to be working on some more Army Men of War right now. So hopefully I can get back into some more daily videos. So from the bottom of my heart, a big thank you to everyone. Everyone as uh, as doing doing this job um, really really makes me happy. So I will see you all 
in the next one.